We have come together this afternoon to mourn the death of Antoniella, and this is good because through mourning together, we can begin the process of healing. We have come together to comfort each other, knowing that we are not alone in our grief lessens its sting. We have come together to say goodbye to the person we knew and loved and to acknowledge that it is time for us to let go. But most important of all, we have gathered to celebrate the life and times of Antonia, Antonietta Alberto and to remember with fondness the good times we shared with her and the memories that we built with her. I'm going to, uh, at this point in time, offer an abridged version of the obituary that was written by Viola and it just sort of deals with the basic details. With sadness, the family announces the passing of Antonietta on Sunday, February the 5th, 2023. She is survived by her children, Peter Alberto, Viola Bauer, and Leo Alberto, grandchildren Angelina and Vincenzo Alberto, with Peter and Darina Alberto, and Anthony and Alexander Bauer, uh, with Viola and Rob Bauer, her dog Bandit, and dog father Leo. Sister-in-law Karen Alberto, along with nieces and nephews Viola and Ryan, and Emily Pritchard, and Peter and David Alberto. In her hometown in Italy, the Velardi and Alberto families. Gerardo, Mario, and Dario, and their families, including many nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Antonietta was predeceased by her daughter, Tanya Alberto, husband, Antonio Alberto, brother-in-law, Nick Alberto, her brothers and sisters, Velardi, Maria, Natale, Pepe, Giovanna, and Lina, her father, Gitano, mother, and Angela Velardi, in-laws, Pietro Alberto, and Aurelia Levato, sister-in-law Viola Alberto and uh, in Sacco, and nephew Vincenzo in Sacco. The family would like to thank the incredible private staff that helped Antonietta in her final days. A heartfelt thanks to Larissa, Nikki, Mariella, and several other health care aides, and the senior companions that gave endless love to our beautiful Mama Nita. A special thank you to Dr. Christine Kalasinski, Dr. Marie Kamini, Dr. Pamela Skrabek, and Dr. Greg Yushin for their years of care and dedication to Antonietta's health. A celebration of service will be held on Saturday, March the 4th at 1 p.m. in the Chapel of Voyage Funeral Home on Kirkfield Street at McBay. Reception and gathering to follow in the lower level. Antonietta's remains will be spread over her daughter Tina's tombstone in Italy and with her parents and siblings. In lieu of flowers, please consider a donation to Wheels of Hope Cancer Care Manitoba Volunteer Drivers and to Willow Place Shelter for Women and Children. Today is a difficult day. It is a day when we have to acknowledge that someone that we have loved has died and will no longer be with us in the physical sense. When we lose a loved one, we feel pain. When we lose a loved one, we grieve. So do not hurry as you walk with grief. Walk slowly, pausing often. Do not hurry as you walk with grief. Do not be disturbed by memories that come unbidden, for they will bring you comfort and peace in time. Be gentle with the one who walks in grief. And if it is you, be gentle with yourself. Walk slowly, pausing often. Take time. Be gentle as you walk with grief. So as you grieve, let me offer you these words of comfort today. In the Bible, King David speaks of our Lord as a shepherd, a shepherd who leads his flock through the dangers of life and into the safety of his sanctuary. I think there's comfort in uh, believing that a loved one has gone to another place, a distant shore, where she will be united with all of those who had gone before her. The breath of God has filled her sails, and Antonietta has gone to that other shore. So let us wish Antonietta a safe journey, holy rest, and peace at the last, in the belief, in the belief that those who have gone before her are on that distant shore, shouting, here she comes. At a time of grief and loss, such as you're experiencing today, it seems awkward uh, to speak of celebrating 
And yet this is what we should do and want to do if we are to move ahead with our lives. We want to celebrate Antonietta's life to show that she and it were worth celebrating. We should celebrate her life to strengthen our memories of her and to keep her close to us. These memories are important because they will see us through the grief that we feel at the loss of a loved one. When we share these memories, we share the grief, and in doing so, we can release ourselves to grieve more gently, to feel more deeply, to remember more clearly, and to let ourselves learn to live out what was the best in Antonietta's life. At this point in time, to share the mem some memories, I'm gonna ask Viola to come forward. First, I just want to say thank you for everybody coming here today and thank you for everybody supporting us in the last year um, through the difficult times that we've gone through with my mom's health. Um, I want to thank my cousin Viola for all of her help and dedication and every single day being on the phone with me. Um, I want to thank my friend Diane Stubbington for um, helping every single day, for being on the phone with me and uh, helping arrange those beautiful flowers. Um, I want to thank uh, Marco DeSanto for being there for me all the time, and Len Hirsch and uh, Rob Magnuson. I also want to say thank you to Mike Voyajakis for uh, hosting this beautiful day, um, this special day for our mother. And so I had all of the flowers that you'll see, the beautiful flowers downstairs. Um, they were all packaged up and Liliana and Ania donated the flowers to us. Um, and I thought of a funny little story that of my mom when I was about, I think about 10 years old. Um, I got a phone call from Liliana at Mona Lisa Florist and she gave me a job. And I was like, wow. I think I volunteered for her, and I was like, wow, I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty amazing. And like at 12 years old, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur like my mom. And uh, I found out about five years ago that my mom paid Liliana just to keep me out of trouble. So it was funny, last night I've got all these like thorn cuts, and I'm like, oh, mom, here you are, you know, keeping me out of trouble again. So I, I wrote some things, so I'm just gonna, um, I'm just going to read what I wrote, uh, um, and just bear with me. Uh, so, my mother was one of the most amazing people I have ever met and will ever meet. She spent her life caring for others. She never put herself before others. She would often go out of her way to reach those who were in need and I know that a lot of you guys here right now will uh, will agree with me that uh, she would go out and she would go like shopping for people. Just like if she had an idea that you needed a, a red hat, she'd go out shopping for you. Like she was just very thoughtful to so many people and especially people in need. She was also often a counselor when the times called for it. And uh, I knew I could uh, come to her no matter what uh, the reason was or the circumstance. I loved her with all my heart. But I found something um, that I just want to play for you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, you won't be able to see it, but uh, this is my this is my mama. I think you never meet someone like That's my mom, right? <laughs> oh boy, mama always said that we could be whoever we wanted to be. She was the person you could really depend on and was constantly supporting her children no matter if they wanted to climb the tallest mountain or build the biggest block tower. She was our rock and that is one lady that will be missed not only by her children, but her grandchildren and by everyone and everybody here. Um, 
when we were growing up, my mother <clears throat> made sure that me and my siblings always had everything we needed and we were always taken care of. She would sacrifice her own happiness for ours. When we were younger, we didn't understand that, um, but she was the type of person, giving person, as we grew up and began to realize that Mama was one of the good ones. She always said that, um, she always said, sorry, you had to be nice to everyone, even if you weren't, if they weren't nice to you. You don't fight evil with evil because you didn't know what might be going on in their lives. I could never understand how she could be so compassionate uh, to people who were not nice to her. Um, that was my mama. Um, that's how she was. She was always caring for everyone else. Um, you can never get as much time with the ones you love uh, as you think you are owed. We didn't know mama's time um, was going to be this short, um, but we still enjoyed every second we could with her. Mama was light, uh, was, a, was a light in my life, and I'm sure she was a light in all of yours. As she would give the shirt off her back and go out of her way to help anyone and any friend in need. I remember um, she would always be there for her friends and family. Um, I, I, I wrote a whole bunch of stuff that I, I uh, okay, I'll just keep reading. But um, there are so <laughs> there are so many memories that I could that I could think of with my mom, like. Uh, oh boy, I, I, there's some things that I probably shouldn't say, like, you know, the times that I'd sneak out at night and then I'd, you know, there's the Nazarcos there that you guys know, I know. It's like, oh boy, I was a, a little bit of a troubled child, but, um, you know, I'd come home and it'd be like this. Like, there was one thing that you were afraid of. One thing you're afraid of is Antonietta and God. <laughs> that was her thing. <laughs> So she was a tough woman. Um, I know that uh, we were lucky to have such a great mother and even luckier that we were able to spend so much time with her, individual time at the end of her life, um, all of her three children and her grandchildren and her family um, got the opportunity to spend great time with her. They, were, uh, they knew that she was like a tough one. And like, I'm sure the Nazarcos, you guys could probably attest to this, when it was uh, uh, Leo and Peter, uh, when it was dinner time, you could hear my mom from miles away. The Ola! Like it was just, she was just, her voice and her singing and her joy and her, oh, just, she was just full of love. Um, so one of the things that uh, when we chose today, today is National March 4th Day. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that in the obituary or, um, and my mom was always very, I don't know if stubborn is the word, but very tenacious and very focused on helping others. Mama is with us today in our hearts. Words cannot express how much she meant to me and my family. I know she is resting in peace. Let us remember Mama as the carefree and loving person she was and celebrate the life of a great woman as we honor her memory today. Our mothers in Jehovah's memory as a faithful servant and she will be resurrected on paradise on earth. Thank you. There is also a measure of hope and reassurance of the permanence of human life. If we look at life as being a book in the great library of humanity, some books are short, some are long, some are sad, some are funny, but they are all complete. Each book has a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Each book has many chapters, and these chapters tell the story of love, drama, comedy, Mystery, loss, adversity, growth, disappointment, triumph, etc. These are things that all of us go through in the course of our lifetime. Some chapters may seem to be dull and ordinary. Others will be intense and exciting. Some chapters may be sweet. Some may be too short. But it is our words, our thoughts, our actions 
that, and non-actions and choices that are the pens that write the pages in each of our books. Even though the author of the book is no longer with us, we still have a story. It is a part of our history in that it connects us to the past and it's a part of our future when we carry it with us. It's a permanent part of our human experience. Viola wrote a comprehensive obituary which really illustrates the life story of Antonietta Remar admirably. In the first chapter, we learned that Antonietta was born in St. Pietro Magisano, Calabria, Italy, on December the 30th, 1942, to Gaetano and Angela Velardi. She was a baby sister to Maria, Natale, Pepe, Giovanni, and Lina. Weighing in at a whole four pounds, Antonietta was a special little surprise package. She studied to be a seamstress at a young age, but always had her eyes towards the ministry and was always deeply devoted, devoted to God. She was the youngest daughter of six siblings. She was also a part of the Velarde and Alberto families. What this chapter doesn't show us is the struggles and the hardships that people went through during the war and in the years that followed. In the next chapter, we learn about Antonietta leaving her homeland. Antonietta, Mar Antonietta married Antonio Alberto and moved to Canada to start their life in 1968, celebrating their wedding with their new community. After arriving in Halifax by boat and then to Winnipeg by train, Antonietta started her family and her journey living in Canada. She became a permanent resident in 1968. We also learn about her efforts to support her family. She worked in leather and sewing factories and tailoring shops. She did piecework from home in evenings and weekends with her husband for several years. This, learned, uh, this earned their opportunity to move from a rental house on Lipton Street to buying their first home on Pacific Avenue, and then finally raising their family in their River Heights home on Renfrew Street. Another chapter shows us that Antonia shows us Antonia's red, uh, role as a mother. She welcomed four children into the world: Peter, Viola, Tanya, uh, in, 19, six, in 1977, who uh, sadly passed away from leukemia, and Leo. She became the strictest mother and was adopted uh, was adopted the Italian mama of the neighborhood. Mrs. Alberto was there for so many helping several families and friends over the years. She was a loving and joyful stay-at-home mother with devout uh, love for God and singing. In her retirement, she always made herself and her resources available to raising her grandchildren. Helping raise the grandchildren, she fulfilled her greatest role as Nonina. She cherished her dog, Bandit. Antonietta became a single mother of three and began her life as an entrepreneur. Her career evolved as she did. She created multiple uh, income streams to raise her children independently. Antonietta managed her own home daycare and became a landlady, renting out all that she could, including the garage, the parking lot, and even the garden and the tenement property. And perhaps somebody else's too, we don't know. Some of her favorite uh, places of employment included the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, sewing dresses on the, uh, onto ballerina Miss Evelyn Hart, uh, Fiat, the Canadian military, and ultimately owning her own tailor shops, La Gioconda Tailors and Tony's Custom Tailors. So as the chapters continue, we see that Antonietta was not just about work though. She loved the opera, she loved singing and attending. She would remind us daily that singing and following the, uh, following the Lord Jehovah God was the key to happiness. You will never be depressed if you sing. Sing it. Sing, sing, sing. Canta e ti passa. Sing and it will pass. Antonietta enjoyed spending time with her lady friends that she met in her sewing career. She found great comfort in her friendship with her best cherished friend, Carmela Tuzzolini, Together, they, married, they created happy memories for their families, facing adversities and supporting each other through difficult times. Garage sales and thrift store shopping with, uh, with Maria Giardina and Teresa D'Ottavio were always on the agenda. 
She lived life to the fullest and cherished her close and supportive friends, the Nazarcos, our Irish neighbours. God and creator of us all, as you bring us face to face with our mortality, we humbly acknowledge that there is a time to live and a time to die. We thank you for making each one of us in your own image and giving us gifts in body, mind and spirit in which we live out our days on earth. For the gift of life, we are grateful. For the gift of Antonietta, we are grateful. We thank you that for Antonietta, all pain and suffering have ended, that death itself is past, and she has entered the home where all your people gather in peace. We pray that you will show us the path of life and the fullness of joy in your presence through all eternity. Amen.